Hello and good morning, brothers and sisters. It's your sister once again, Dr. Erica Ward, with another morning commute exhortation. I just want to share with you this morning a little bit of encouragement for your day. <clears throat> and I'm going to start off with a little bit of a musical message, and hopefully, it blesses you as it has blessed me down through the years. <clears throat> Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. <clears throat> Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by God the glory because he has been yet faithful <clears throat> and the encouragement the Lord wants me to share with you is to encourage you because you have been faithful you've been faithful over a few things and the Lord said if you be faithful over a few things he'll make you ruler over many so stay faithful my brothers and sisters stay faithful stay faithful in ministry Stay faithful in your families. Stay faithful on your job. Stay faithful no matter what the opposition, no matter what the difficulties. Oftentimes we can get caught up because in our humanity we want to talk about what we're going through and we may end up finding ourselves murmuring and complaining. You know, talking about what's real. But the Lord said if you be faithful, he's going to reward you. So do what you do heartily as unto the Lord. Be faithful unto death and God will reward you here and when we get to glory, we'll have a reward because God is faithful and he is faithful that promised and he has so many great and precious promises. I want you to familiarize yourself once again with the promises of God. Pick up your word and remind yourself what it is that the Lord has promised to you so that you can encourage yourself and continue to move on and be faithful whether man recognizes you or not, whether man treats you well or not, whether humanity loves you or not. We're not living this life for the people on the earth. We give our lives as a testimony of love to service the people on the earth. But we're living this life to live again. We're living this life for our eternal existence um, beyond the grave. Amen. Because that's a place we all have to visit. It's a place we all have to go. Because this is not our home. And death is a graduation. Amen. Even though, you know, we love living life. We love being here. We enjoy what God has given us. Because he's given us a beautiful world. And a beautiful uh, uh, group of people to love and associate with in our families, in our churches, even our co-workers. You know, but if that's not your testimony, you might be going through. You might be struggling in your home, in your church, on your job. But God says be faithful. Be faithful and do what you do as unto him. If man doesn't appreciate you, if man doesn't thank you if man doesn't recognize what you have done 
how you have serviced and given of yourself. The Lord says, he sees you. The Lord says, I see you. I see you. Know that the Lord loves you and that the Lord will not forget your labor of love. He will not forget your sacrifices. He will not forget what, what it took for you to be the person that you are representing him in the best light in every area of your life. And a lot of people say, you know, the true person comes out when they're at home around the people that they love or the people that they tolerate. How about that? <laughs> but the true you should be the consistent you no matter where you are. That's what we're working on. The person in secret needs to be the same as the person in the public. How about that? That's what we got to work on, y'all. Be faithful, but be holy. Be holy. Be ye holy, for God is holy. And holiness extends beyond the externals that we show other people to try to impress them that we truly are uh, devout and that we're holy people. But we do what we do as unto the Lord and everything that we do, it should be done as unto him and not just to let people know who we are or make people feel impressed by us or whatever the motivation might be. Uh, we should be doing everything with a pure heart to make God happy. That should be the motivation. It's not about people as much as it is when we're doing what is what, what, what's going to make God happy in secret, in public, no matter where we are. If we're doing what's going to make God happy, then we're truly representing the kingdom. And God will help us in our areas of weakness um, because we're human. This flesh is going to try to rise up. But if you don't put that flesh down, you better believe it'll take you around like a dog on a on a on a uh, <laughs> on a chain, and you'll be running down behind your flesh. I'm talking right, and I know I am. You better put that flesh under subjection of the Holy Spirit, and not allow it to run and rule you, because the enemy wants to. Uh, cause there to be a stumbling block in your life but you know there are many familiar spirits spirits from our past spirits that the enemy has tried to assign to our lives just like God has assignments the enemy chooses assignments too but we rebuke the devil and we command you Satan come off your assignment right now loose my brother and my sister right now in the name of Jesus and I command every demon and devil that you've assigned to their life to stop Come off your assignment right now in Jesus' name. I speak the peace of God over your life. I speak the providence of God over your life. I speak the will of God over your life, my brother and my sister. I command that you will claim your right as a child of the kingdom and that you will not allow the enemy to keep coming in and subject you to his trickery. You will not allow the enemy to come in. You will see it. You will be aware of it and you will rebuke it immediately. Every spirit that comes to hinder the divine will of God in your life, you will speak to it and you will cast it out and you will, in the name of Jesus, make it stop and make it behave because God put the power inside of you. Sometimes you just need to realize what that spirit is and sometimes God will give you the name. He'll give you exactly what it is that you need to be rebuking. Because a lot of times people feel like, well, that's just me. You know, this has always been a problem for me. Well, no, it's a spirit. <laughs> it's a spirit. And we need to acknowledge that the spiritual realm is so, so real. Even almost more real than what we see in the natural. It is. It's just as real. And you need to understand that the spirit realm is busy working. And some of us will say working in the background, but... It's working in the foreground. It's 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 ever around us. It's ever uh, we're ever subjected to the spirit realm, and be it demonic spirits or the angels of God and the Holy Spirit of God. But the spirit realm is real. Understand that, and 
and know that you have an enemy, the devil, who's going to and fro like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, and he's looking for a place of weakness to come in. And honestly, y'all, he don't he does not have free course to just come up in your life. He does not have permission even to come into your life if you are a child of the king. If Christ is in you, the enemy can't just come up in your business. He can't just come up in your life and wreck up things. However, we're going to be subjected to trials and tribulations because we live on this earth. But there's spiritual warfare that is happening. And sometimes we just kind of uh, surrender to it. When the enemy comes in, we're supposed to resist the devil and he shall flee because that's what the word of God says and it's been proven. We don't have to accept everything that's coming our way just because we don't realize it's a spiritual battle. Um, so understand whatever it is you might be dealing with that's a difficulty, a trial, um, and, or a spiritual stronghold. The enemy is going to look for a little bit of a way in. If he can get you to start backbiting, that's a way in. If he can get you to hate somebody, that's a way in. If he can get you to hold unforgiveness, that's a way in. It's uh, um, The enemy, he's never going to be uh, an uninvited guest. We just don't realize the ways that we may invite him in. Um, so understand that he doesn't get to just walk up in your door. He doesn't get to just walk up in your life and in your business. He may try to affect weak people around you to influence you so that you can come out of your shell and, and be something other than what you ought to be or come out of yourself, <laughs> come out of your righteous self, um, be provoked. Um, and, you know, all I can say is that God wants you to continue to be the light that he created you to be and the enemy wants to bring darkness period in any way he can he is constantly in a battle to try to prove that guess what they ain't all that he's the accuser of the brethren and he's constantly trying to enlarge hell because he wants some company but um y'all we don't have to go there we can choose to live a life that is not pleasing to God and that will seal the ticket to which way we go when our life ends on this earth. And we need to understand that life isn't just happening to us. We do have some control over what is going on in the realm around us because we are spiritual beings. We have the ability to speak life to a situation. We have the ability to cease and desist the works of the enemy that come to hinder us through the power of prayer, through the power of our own tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So use your words to defeat the enemy. Use your words to build other people. Use your words to encourage yourself and continue to stay faithful and not allow yourself to be subject to the enemy's trickery to the enemy's traps and to the enemy's works that he's trying to do to keep us in a place where we know in our heart is not pleasing to God. We know it. It doesn't really matter what other people know or think, but we know. And if we don't know, we need to be seeking God. There's a prayer that I've always prayed throughout my life, Lord, that if there's anything in me that is not right, anything in me that's not of you, take it out. That's the dying daily take it out Lord I don't want anything to hinder you and me I don't want any sin to, to um, stack up like a brick wall between us so tear down the brick wall y'all tear it down don't let the enemy build a brick wall between you and God and you're the one who's laying the mortar okay don't let the enemy do that so you have to take control there is something we gotta do um, faith without works is dead there's something we have to actually do. So God bless you. It's been a pleasure talking to you this wonderful morning. I pray that this is a blessing to you. And I want to, of course, hear your comments. I want to, uh, if you have a prayer request, I'll be praying for you if you need prayer. Um, if you know somebody who needs to hear this message, share it. Please share it. Please like it. 
um, you're more than welcome to um, share it on social media um, because I do want what God has given me to get to the ears of the people that need to hear it and of course I don't know everybody and I don't know as many people as I thought I knew how about that <laughs> so I would love for you all to share this morning commute exhortations and the previous morning commute exhortations with someone who needs to hear the message. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Love you. Bye-bye.